taking a step back, if we were to think about skin, <clears throat> excuse me, skin health in general, um, what uh, what do you see is like the biggest threats to the skin, uh, like internal, what, what we eat, or external? It's UVB, and I, I noticed you mentioned blue light. So, mm -hmm. at, so is, is blue light also a concern for the skin? Yes, I would say that the, the major driver of skin aging is uv exposure so we it's very clear even like the areas of our our face you know our body that are exposed and the areas that are not how much one ages differently or faster than the other right so even why a lot of times we have like sun damage around our chest but we don't have in our bellies because <laughs> our chest is <laughs> it's more exposed so this is very clear. So UV exposure accounts for 90% of what we call extrinsic aging. So external factors that drive aging. And then the other 10% are pollution, um, depending on the weather condition, if it's too dry, um, blue light, it, it's harder to measure, but it does have an impact. So the way that blue light impacts is basically... Um, producing some free radicals and those free radicals will cause you know oxidation of our proteins and and nucleic acids and that will lead to you know eventually some uh, DNA damage. So these are the external factors. The internal obviously are things related to your diet. If you eat too much sugar, uh, one of the main um, consequences is that you are going to have the advanced glycation end products which cause the collagen to cross link and basically it uh, is going to impact like the the whole extracellular matrix so you're going to uh, you're not going to have that you know plump skin you're going to have like a more uh, you're going to decrease like the amount of collagen that sustains the skin so diet really impacts it. We know that sugar also causes inflammation. Inflammation, it's uh, a driver of aging as well. And uh, on the other side, uh, diet rich on antioxidants and anti-inflammatory food will help your skin to look better as well. And obviously, if you consume the right amount of proteins that will be generating the peptides that you need to absorb in order to be able to produce more collagen in your skin that will help as well so some people like taking collagen peptides because you are already providing to your body the right peptides that you need to absorb in order to be able to produce collagen in your skin it's not that the collagen that you are drinking will become you know, it's not the same that it was going to be to your skin, but at least you have like the substract, right? Like the, <laughs> the ingredients that your skin needs to, to build your own collagen. Uh, other factors that impact your skin health, obviously hydration, very, very important. Your sleep, uh, stress levels. We know that, you know, cortisol is going to be related to inflammation. Inflammation is going to accelerate aging. Uh, and this can come out in, in several types of like breakouts or, or even eczema or skin flares. So in the end, it's a very holistic approach. I think both are very important. So we need to treat our body internally and, you know, protect our skin externally as well. Um, yeah, and try to have a routine of skin care that also doesn't over stress your skin I think it's also possible that you add too much actives or too much exfoliation for example people if they like using retinols or uh, retinoic acid if it's too strong that can be peeling off your skin and can be causing your cells to be turning over too much and then you are exhausting your skin in the long term so there is always a balance. And for us, it's finding that balance, how we can promote like a healthy cell turnover, how we can nurture our skin from the inside and from the outside, how we can avoid excessive UV damage. 
because we know that a little bit of UV light is important for us, but we don't want that UV light to be burning our skin. So I think in the end, it's, it's being very mindful of uh, that uh, threshold that's, you know, is, is supporting your skin and not causing uh, um, too much of uh, a, a negative impact. Just thinking about the balance for UV a little bit, right? Because we have spoken to some people and they said, well, you should wear sunblock all the time. You know, even if you're inside, you should wear sunblock. Uh, but also it's like you need to go out, you need to get vitamin D and vitamin D comes from sunlight. So just what are your thoughts in a little bit more detail on that? Yeah, it's a very controversial, uh, controversial <laughs> topic. Uh yeah. My take, what I do for myself, I like sunlight in the mornings or in the afternoons when the sun is not too strong, uh, because I think that sunlight is important even, you know, for your circadian, you know, rhythm kind of, and, and for your stress, for your overall like mood and wellness, uh, I'm not the person that's going to be exposed 15 minutes at the highest UV index to get vitamin D. And if I feel my skin burning, I'm out of the sun. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's my threshold. Like I, I, the burn to me, it doesn't feel safe or healthy. So even if I'm in the sun and if it's burning, I'll be, you know, uh, applying a lot of sunblock. So I would prefer to supplement with vitamin D instead of taking the risk of getting the vitamin D from the sun and potentially have some damage that will eventually lead to a skin cancer that's way mm -hmm. harder to treat that are deficient in vitamin D. So this is my, my personal way to find that balance. I love the sun. I love being out there and I think that's important. But if I feel my skin burning, I don't think that's safe. I don't think that's good. <laughs> yeah. In today's fast-paced world, stress is something that we all deal with. But what if there was a simple solution to help you manage it better? Enter magnesium, specifically magnesium breakthrough from Bioptimizers. Magnesium breakthrough is designed to help you replenish your magnesium levels and helps you maintain healthy levels of stress hormones like cortisol, promote a more balanced stress response in your nervous and hormone systems, and supports the healthy production of GABA, the neurotransmitter known for its relaxing effects. What sets Magnesium Breakthrough apart is its unique formulation containing all seven forms of magnesium. My wife takes Magnesium Breakthrough in the morning to help her stay calm and focused during the day, while I take it in the evening to ensure a good night's relaxing sleep. If you're interested in trying Magnesium Breakthrough, go to bioptimizers.com slash modern and enjoy 10% off your purchase with the code modern 10 Plus, there's additional gifts waiting for you with each purchase. You kind of touched on your personal protocol a little bit there, and we did talk about it last time. I just, uh, any change, well, let, let, what is your personal protocol at the moment for kind of longevity, including any supplements that you take? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I started the basics. I think for me, the basics are uh, diet and exercise. So my diet, it's more on the Mediterranean style of like more fish and vegetables, try whole foods as much as possible, avoid sugar, um, and eat red meat occasionally. Um and uh, on exercise, I try to exercise at least five times, if possible, six times a week. I try to combine some high intensive interval uh, training in order to get, you know, that cardiovascular uh, pumping and uh, training improves your, your cardiovascular health. And, and then it's the sleep. I think sleep is one of the, the, the areas that I got really more uh, obsessed about because I know how much, <laughs> how much it impacts everything else, including my mood, my productivity, my 
uh, yeah, how much I, I feel rested. Uh, so I've been using the whoop, uh, right. yeah, for I think at least two years now. And uh, it's really good to see some of the metrics improving. So, for example, my HRV, that's my um, heart rate. Uh, uh, variability. Yeah, heart variability. Rate. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it's going up. So that's a good sign. So it's yeah. mean, it means that I'm recovering well. And I'm also doing that, you know, strength training that is pushing, mm -hmm. you know, improving my cardiovascular health. Um, so sleep, I take magnesium at night. So I think yeah. after I start taking magnesium, it did help me to have better deep and REM sleep. Uh, and then the other things that I do, uh, I mean, meditation as much as possible. I try to meditate every day, try to calm my mind before I get, uh, started in the day uh running a company is always you know they're they're always challenging so <laughs> <laughs> being able to not let the stress take over is is really important uh other than that i've been trying to take a little bit of a cold shower at the end of the my shower so at least like 20 to 30 seconds now that's winter is a little harder <laughs> But uh, in the summer, I can do like 30 seconds in the winter. Probably I'm <laughs> a little shorter than that. Uh, and then in terms of supplements, I stopped. Uh, so I was taking a man for a while. Uh, I stopped. I just think it's sometimes important like to cycle. So mm -hmm. I stopped. And then I was taking some probiotics. Uh, so right now, most recently, uh, I'm just taking like multivitamins and uh, and magnesium um, because I mm -hmm. think it's important to keep like the vitamin D, uh, you know, women for fertility is important to have folate and uh, there are others that are more related like to fertility. That's an area mm -hmm. that I'm interested in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I stopped with NMN. I want to measure again my biological age. And then eventually I want to go back to it. I stopped for a while. But um, yeah, that's where I am right now. Not many supplements. I, I kind of like to cycle them. But I think uh, I want to get this baseline of the biological age so I can measure more accurately the the impact of a, a given supplement. Right. So last time we spoke, you were taking fisetin, I think, like monthly. Are you That's still true. Doing? Yeah. yeah. I stopped because uh, at that time, I think I, I don't know, I, I was taking one that I needed to measure myself I, I there was not like a, a pill that I would take every day but but that's a good one um again maybe that's one that I should go back to <laughs> when I measure my biological age yeah right so just why why biological age um I mean do you also look at your like your blood markers do you have them done uh, why do you think my biological age would be a better Kind of metric to use to measure your progress mm -hmm. i think it, it combines everything so uh i think right now one of the main uh clocks that uh, people regarded as valuable is the the one that you measure the pace of aging right mm -hmm. so how much you are how fast you are aging or how slower you are aging so i think this gives you like a global view of your whole health and i haven't done that one yet so i want to do that one mm -hmm. uh and i think on the blood markers yes they are also important I, I yeah i just have you know didn't have time to focus on like <laughs> I, I do the regular like uh, blood tests and I don't think they mean anything it's like okay I'm like on this interval that you know <laughs> yeah so I think for blood I think you needed to go more specifically on some inflammatory markers or whatever it is so I haven't gone that there yet okay yeah the, the donut in 
I think that's how you pronounce it. Dunedin yeah. pace, yes. pace of aging clock. Yeah, yeah, the one that the rejuvenation leaderboard uses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so see if you, I, <laughs> how I rank on the the rejuvenation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you so much. So where can people come to find out more about uh, one skin and so do you still ship but so where do you ship to as well yes so right now we are shipping to obviously the whole us canada uk and australia we are going to start shipping to uh eu and the new zealand by the end of the month or i think so or in the coming weeks uh and so we are slowly adding new countries mm -hmm. you're still singapore right we're in hong kong yeah oh, hong kong yeah. yeah so maybe that's you know an area that we can look next uh but yeah we've been we found a great partner for international shipping so we've been able to expand our markets recently so that's where we are right now hopefully to have more updates soon Okay, and uh, where where do they go to follow your work? Yes, uh, go to our website oneskin.co. Mm -hmm. uh, please, I recommend subscribe to our newsletters. We have a lot of content of data that we develop in the lab, new products that we are developing. Um, yeah, a, a lot of longevity content as well, not only focused on the skin. And follow us on Instagram, that is also at oneskin.co. And we are starting on TikTok, if anyone likes TikTok, but <laughs> we're still new there. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I saw your, your papers all seem to be open access as well. Yes, it's a, they, are also av they are all available on our website. So Oneskin, you go to scientific publications. And uh, very soon we'll be adding our clinical studies as well. So uh, yeah, all the information on our, on our you can find on our website. Look forward to that. Yes. Okay, uh, Dr. Hayes, thank you so much for joining us today. Great to talk to you again. Yeah, thanks again for having me, Richard. Always a pleasure. Thank you.